Welcome, friends. A number of you have asked if Hurricane Hillary did much damage where I live, and the short answer is no. We were lucky. A few miles to the east of us, in the Mojave Desert, it was a different story. In our location, there was no flooding, the storm dropped about six inches of water, and our average rainfall is 15 inches, and so I guess we're almost full up. Anyway, now on to the video. I will start by listing seven tips for staying cool in hot weather. The first two tips were discussed in the last episode, and the remaining tips will be explained in this video. Tip number one, acclimate to extreme heat. All of our body's physiology, hi B. Oh, everybody's joining me. Your body's physiology, several, uh, <laughs> Oh, wow. Hello. That critter's adapted to the heat. Your body's physiology changes gradually as you adjust to extreme heat. These physiological changes are known as acclimation. And they take place gradually and they're critical for survival. So I'm gonna talk about that and we're gonna learn from sports medicine. The second tip is to use microclimates to stay cool. You know, weather channels on TV and on the internet report conditions in a standard way. That is five feet off the ground and in the open shade. Reality is much different than that. The microclimate down here in the soil where that bumblebee was hiding before buzzing me is much different there than up here. And the color that you are makes your climate much different. And so we're gonna talk about using microclimates to stay cool. And every time I do this, I'm absolutely amazed about microclimates. Now the third uh, tip will be to drink plenty of water before you are thirsty. And according to the National Institute of, for Safety and Health, in extreme heat, people should drink eight ounces of water every 15 to 20 minutes. And so continually drinking before you are thirsty. Number four, limit activity during the heat of the day. You know, we should be like the wildlife. They know when it's too hot, even though they're, they're acclimated. Seek shelter when it is too hot. The active wildlife become much more active when it's really, really hot at dawn and dusk. And some wildlife that are usually day active become night active when it's too hot. And we'll talk more about this and I'm gonna share some links to some things that I, I published a few years ago on, on the internet. I, I talked about a few years ago, how to do night hiking and uh, learn from both pirates and blind people. The fifth tip, wear clothing that protects your body from heat. Light colored, loose clothing with air spaces allow sweat evaporation and cooling. And uh, we'll talk about light colored clothing, dark clothing in some cases, what happens. And I learned a few lessons about this as I studied it over the years. Number six, protect yourself from sunburn and bug bites. You know, the chemicals that are in sunscreen and in bug repellent interact with each other. They're not effective when they're used together. You need to know that. And what I do is I use sunscreen on places where skin is exposed and you potentially get sunburns the back of my neck and things like that. And then I use repellent on my clothing. That will keep off of me. And also, we'll talk about some of the old 1800 ways of protecting yourself with uh, ladies undergarments. And so I'll show you more about that. Finally, number seven. I will demonstrate several different yoga breathing techniques that will help you relax 
lower your blood pressure, and cool off your body. So some of these techniques are a little bit unusual. That's, that's what this video is all about, and so let's look at it now, one by one. Drink eight ounces of water every 15 to 20 minutes, according to the National Institute for Occupational Health and Safety. You have to drink water before you're thirsty. And I want to tell you something and show you some clips from something, a big mistake I made. About four or five years ago, I wanted to do a video about testing your limits. So I was testing my limits. We were in Texas at the time, and uh, I went to Pernally State Park, and that's famous for this waterfall, sort of, and the big floods they have, flash floods every so often. Here, where the temperatures were high 90s during the day and in the uh, 80s at night. I went there right before the flash floods were to start. And instead of camping in the area for dispersed camping, I went outside that area. And I passed five dry creeks. And I camped back there still. And it was going to be a, a three or four day camping trip. The first night, the rains came and the lightning came and the more rains came. And I thought I was away from the creek far enough and the rains came. I was not thirsty because it was humid and warm. I drank a little bit of water, but not what I should have. I couldn't sleep. I kept checking the creek level all night long. And in the morning, the creek got pretty high. And so I decided I'd try to leave uh, before they got any higher because I wouldn't be able to cross these creeks because the water was flowing so fast. I was afraid I'd be washed into the Pergnale River, which was that flood stage. I um, got up and I felt really strange. I, I did not feel good. I felt dizzy and I couldn't concentrate. And I would drink a little bit of water, but not very much. I was peeing all night long and the urine was clear and how could I be dehydrated? It was humid. It was raining. I could I had my mouth open drinking the rainwater. My clothes were soaking wet. I couldn't walk but a few feet before having to sit down or I'd fall down. And so I walked about a, a mile and a half, it's about, or maybe two miles before I could get a cell signal and ask the rangers to send somebody up there because I uh, needed help walking back. But they were really good. In a few minutes, they came in their four-wheel drive truck and then took me back to my uh, Jeep. Uh, and I tried to hide the fact that I was dizzy. And by the way, I was hallucinating big time. I saw things that weren't there. An ambulance took me to the hospital. When I told the people in the ambulance what I was doing, they said, why aren't, and I have a YouTube channel, why aren't you videoing this? And I said, this is too personal. I don't want, I don't want any of this film. And I got chewed out royal, royally, by the way, by the hospital staff, the doctors, the nurses. Someone your age, here, that was four or five years ago or so, your age shouldn't be hiking alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You should always have cell service. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're right. They're right. And I was dehydrated. And I don't know what else was happening because I know my heart's a little unusual and it scared them. And it scared me. But anyway, I finally was released. And uh, I did dry ho drive home. But even after I was released, for the next day and a half, I was hallucinating. I saw things that weren't there and then they'd disappear. Your body doesn't always tell you when you need to drink. If you're in a humid environment and there's water falling all over you, you don't feel thirsty. You may be overheated and you may be dehydrated. And I was both, heat exhaustion and dehydration. So I was lucky. 
I'm not going to let that happen again today. That's one of the reasons why I don't camp very far away anymore. When it's too hot, wildlife disappear. They seek shelter. Their bodies tell them to seek shelter. And so during the heat of the day, we too need to seek shelter. And I assure you that your gardeners, your outdoor painters, all the people who work outside change what they do during the hottest part of the day. We were having our house painted a couple weeks ago, and the painters would only paint the upstairs outside and the, the part where they had to stand on the roof only in the morning. In the afternoon, they painted the shaded areas. Your gardeners sit down in the shade to cool off next to the grass. And if it's very, very hot, they stop working. So we need to do the same. All of us need to do the same. What I want to suggest is something that some animals do. Some day active animals become night active when it's too hot. And when it cools off, they become day active. Armadillos do that. We had some in our yard in, in East Texas. And sure enough, they, they were day active in the winter and night active in the summer. And we too can change from day active to night active. And if you want to enjoy the outdoors in a hot summer day or a hot summer night, is to go on a night hike. Often people do night hiking when there's a full moon. But you can also do it at times when there is no moon or when there's dim light. And to do that, there are a couple of things you should know about. Night vision capabilities with human beings increase if you are in the dark. So you want to be in the dark and not have very much light. And if you have any light, like a flashlight, it should be just a red color. And with that, you can do a number of things. And I have some videos about that. I'm going to show you some clips. Pirates, you know, wear a patch on one eye. And the reason they do that, one eye that is always good in the dark, that's the eye they have covered. So then they take that patch off and they can see with that one eye. Put that patch back on, and then when they're up out in the open, they can see with the other eye where it's bright. I'm going to show you a couple of clips on uh, tips for night hiking. The following tips will improve your ability to navigate in the dark, whether you plan to go on a night hike with a family or infiltrate a secret location with other ninjas. Welcome to a new mini-series on night sky navigation. This episode discusses the basics of moon and star navigation for the Northern Hemisphere. Just clips from some of my previous videos. When we're under extreme heat, at temperatures above 100, protective clothing is exceedingly important. Uh, outdoor workers wear long sleeve shirts, long pants, and something that covers their head. Recreational folks often wear short pants, short sleeve shirts, and so forth. That's okay if you're only out in the heat and the sun for a short while. So what's the temperature here in the sun or in the shade? 110 degrees in the sun. 105 degrees air temperature in the open shade. And that's approximately what the weather forecast people indicated. What's the temperature of my shirt? 120. Let's do that again. 117. So that's 117 degrees. Well, what happens if I were to wear a shirt that's a dark color?
Light colored clothing makes a huge temperature difference. Dark colors get very, very hot, up to 168 degrees Fahrenheit for the black hat and 140 degrees for the black shirts. White was the coolest with the temperature of the hat and the shirt being 108 degrees Fahrenheit. This is the shirt I wear every Saturday. Got to get the twigs off of it. The Carl Men's Club shirt. Love the shirt. It's a great club. The shirt's a little warm in the hot weather, even the short sleeve. 118. Come on, cool off. Oh, come on. Well, I think this test shows that lighter colors are best. But there's more to the story. Clothing needs to fit loosely, preferably with vents. You know, that improves ventilation. And you know, I need to shake my men's club shirt to get enough of a breeze to feel comfortable because it's relatively tight fitting. I would have cooled off further if I wore a bandana around my neck and, and dampened it with water over, over my head. But I'm still missing something. Bedouin nomads who historically lived in the deserts of North Africa and the Middle East wear long robes and scarves to cover most of their body. And many times the robes are black. So the big question is, how do these people stay cool? You know, the Bedouins are not biologically different from other people. A scientific study by Harvard University and the University of Tel Aviv showed that Bedouin clothing of any color is better suited to extreme desert heat than Western style clothing. I wonder how does that happen? Black colors absorb more heat, but none of it reaches the skin. The clothing is loose and has double layers of lightweight cotton and that fabric acts as an insulator along with, with the air that flows through it, preventing excess heat from reaching the skin. And there's enough ventilation that evaporation continues. This type of clothing offers protection from the harsh sun and also blowing sand. This reminds me of the black beetles that my twin brother studied in the Mojave Deserts of California. Black beetles live in deserts, including the Middle East, and being black is not a problem if you have some sort of insulation so that your inner workings cool off. During warm weather, most folks wear short sleeve shirts and short pants when they go hiking. And this is an invitation for disaster. You know, scratches from thorny vines or falling rocks or stepping on snakes or other and biting bugs. And all of these problems are reduced if you wear a long sleeve shirt that's ventilated and, and long pants, a loose long pants. In those situations, you only need to use sunscreen on exposed skin and bug repellent on the clothing. I want to show you the, the clothing that I usually wear it's a fishing style clothing and it's ventilated. Let me take it off the hanger. You can see the ventilation inside. It has two layers with ventilation. And it's unbelievable. And the pants are sort of the same and it's, it's called fish gear. I use Magellan Outdoors fish gear. And this keeps me very comfortable. I'm protected from all the, the issues when you're on the trail. In the 1800s, American settlers had many creative ideas to prevent sunburn and bug bites. And you know, there's a fabric that is used to make petticoats. You can buy a similar material in a modern country store that's like Walmart for just a few dollars. And you can see the screen here. I use the screen to cover the back of my Jeep if I'm sleeping it to keep the bugs out of it. And when you're camping on the trail, you can just put it over your gear and the bugs won't bite you at night. You can also put it over your head 
and put a hat, put it over your hat, and then tuck it into your clothing, and you don't get bites around your face. Another advantage of the screen like this is that it reduces sunlight intensity. And that's pretty good because it reduces the likelihood of sunburn. Another idea is to use an old military uh, trick to wear pantyhose underneath your socks. We use that when you're walking through swamps, and I've done that. The leeches don't bite me. And then I also found I got much fewer mosquito bites. Changing the rhythm of your breath can change how you feel. If the rhythm slows down, it will signal rest and relaxation. Your heart rate will slow down and your body temperature will drop. When I go to the doctor's office, I'm usually anxious. And you know I have white coat syndrome and my blood pressure skyrockets as soon as the nurse takes it. Last year, the nurse tried something new and she instructed me to breathe slowly, to inhale, pause, and exhale. And as she guided me, I was told to think about something that was really relaxing for me. And of course, I, I thought about hanging in a hammock over a creek and being so nice and cool and refreshed. And you know what happened? After a few breaths, she took my blood pressure and it, had, it dropped 30 points. The doctor was really impressed, took me off a of blood pressure medication and said, I will not need to take it again if I continue meditating and relaxing whenever I feel tense, anxious, or even overheated. The technique that I usually use when meditating is called a four, seven, eight breathing technique. And you inhale for four seconds, hold your breath for seven seconds, and exhale slowly for eight seconds, four, seven, eight. And I count this for the first few breaths, and then after that I just go by the way my body feels. Counting first helps me get, begin to slow down. In a yoga class, this is often taught while you're sitting in a seated meditation position. It's not necessary to sit in a special position. You can sit in a chair and just do this, slowing down your breath and thinking of something relaxing for you. And I like to do it even on the ground, lying on the ground. And that way, if I'm overheated, my body's conducting my excess heat to the ground, usually grass, I like, I like cool grass. And then dreaming of what I ever want to dream of, just relaxing. Now, the reason it cools you off is one important part to the technique. Breathing in through your nose and out through your mouth. In through your nose brings the air into the moist sinuses where there's evaporation, and that evap evaporation cools your brain. Until your brain is cooled off, and then the hot, used air is expelled through your mouth. So your brain stays cool. The used air is then ex expelled, not through the sinuses again, but through your mouth. So that's the final part of the technique. I do that a couple of breaths while I'm counting. And then after that, I just go into whatever's relaxing for me. And it works. My brain is cool. It's a really cool way to cool off your sinuses and your head. I'm going to describe now two more techniques that will lower your body temperature and help you feel relaxed. The first one is called the tongue hissing breath. And you need to sit up straight or stand up 
uh, but you need to have a straight back. You can't be lying down. And what you're going to do is breathe in with your mouth, making a hissing sound with your tongue rolled to the extent that you can roll it and your lip Uh, breathing in like this will cause the moisture in your mouth through your tongue evaporate and cool off. And you're breathing that cool air into your lungs. And so directly it gets into your core body and your core cools off because you're exhaling through your nose. So here's how it goes. And you know when you're doing it, it, it's going to work because your tongue feels cold and your mouth feels cold. And all that cold air gets into your lungs, heat is transferred, and then the warm air is expelled through your nose. So this one cools your core body. Now, you might not feel comfortable doing this, or maybe you can't roll your, your tongue and you know, whatever, you don't want to do it. So there's a second one that works just as well, and I actually like it more. It's called the teeth hissing breath. And what you do is you clench your teeth together a little bit, not tight, and then breathe in. So you breathe in into your lungs, and then you breathe out through your nose. Your body will cool off really, really fast. Now, don't hyperventilate, don't do it too fast. Now, what's cool about this one is that I can do it standing up and say I'm in an amusement park. I'm taking the grandchildren out somewhere, the great-grandchildren, and I'm really, really hot. And so I just, nobody notices. And if you do that just for a couple minutes, you're oh so much cooler. It, it instantly works. And I like it because I can do it standing. Again, don't hyperventilate, but breathe in forcefully and you'll feel the cool air through your teeth and your mouth and then your lungs. And then you expel the hot air through your nose. And so these methods work. I enjoy them. Try it. You'll like it. Until next time, Peace be with you.